So I'm here to talk about incident management today. Now the first thing is that when you have something going terribly, terribly wrong in production, you can feel trapped. You can feel just surrounded when everything is going bananas. <laughs> so but what we want to do is we want to keep a calm head and we want to feel protected. <laughs> And, and but we, we build up this psychological armor when an incident is happening that, that we, we think is gonna protect us, but the reality is it just makes us move a lot more slowly. And to the point that you know everything is on fire, but we have to remain calm because shit could be going much, much worse. <laughs> Let you dwell on that one for a second. So the thing though is you need to stop, you need to collaborate and listen. <laughs> but the problem is you don't know which direction to go in, right? Because there's lots and lots of opinions that are going on. So really what happens is we just need to sit around and use our melons and use our ideas, right? But you can feel buried by those ideas. Do you notice that? There's a guy buried by the melons, right? So. It can be overwhelming to the point that you don't know what to do, but really move forward. Hop and skip and jump through the meadows of collaboration and teamwork, and eventually your situation will get resolved. And even if it doesn't, the good news is there's a lot of flowers, and that might make you feel better. Thank you. Wow. So I work at Datadog, and we do monitoring, and oftentimes my dashboards kind of look like this. There's a bunch of buttons and lights and things that I have no idea what's going on. I'm pretty sure some of you have dashboards that look like that too. Um, generally the thing is be like, you know, read the manual, figure it out. <laughs> hopefully someone's documented things. Um, hopefully they've documented things and you understand what, what your dashboards actually mean, what those metrics actually mean. But sometimes people just don't do that, right? Like who documents their dashboards? <laughs> nobody. See, nobody raised their hands. Uh, so that ends up leading to massive failures like this. You just crash and it's kind of depressing, but good thing it's next to the train tracks. You just take the train from there. <laughs> and then sometimes there's just no trains. It's empty warehouses like this, or sometimes you get diverted like Jay, who was up here earlier. His train actually made it today, which is pretty cool with the detour through Delaware, apparently. Um, and when things end up not working, you can't get to where you're going just I don't know, fire a tool at it. Maybe fire a shovel, <laughs> right? Because shovels help you dig out of the problems that you've got. Um, tools, I guess, don't fix your broken culture because um, sometimes your culture is just a tower of Jenga and it's <laughs> waiting for, for that last squirrel just to be a, give you that nice little nudge. <laughs> Good job, Jason. <laughs> The hard disk you've been waiting for. Uh, yeah, uh, everybody needs storage. So <laughs> hopefully storage these days doesn't look anything like we've got on the screen. Uh, you know, we need fast storage. Uh, we need storage that protects us from, um, <laughs> from whatever that is. <laughs> we need redundancy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not even sure how to comment on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. Because <laughs> when you don't have storage and you don't have redundancy, it feels like, you know, a car crashing through a roof and that everything's going to just go to hell. And uh, you can't be having that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you gotta pull in the big guns. Uh, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get people that you, uh, you know that know how to handle the job, do the job well, and uh, get it done quickly and efficiently. Not quite like that, but <laughs> or you need uh, specialists, uh, people that uh, really know how to put their ear to the ground and uh, <laughs> find out what the problem is and uh, how to fix it. That's it. All right. <laughs> oh, it's a fish. Uh, I was going to talk about community, and it takes all kinds, really, to put a whole community together. Uh, whether they are all humans or partial humans, 
uh, fish humans are all welcome uh, whenever we're putting this together. And that's uh, why we're all here with DevOps Days. It takes a lot of work to build the structure. You've got to start with a framework uh, before you wrap lightweight materials and fill it full of hydrogen. Um, I'm not sure it's the same <laughs> materials for building communities it is for building uh, Zeppelins, but it's probably close. Uh, sometimes things are hard. Uh, we want to show empathy. We have a lot of feelings. Uh, there are tools to assist us with showing empathy. Um, I don't know if they're as good as real thing is manufactured, but there's tools available to help us in all walks of life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you need to put a call out to increase diversity in your crowd. <laughs> we do not have a dinosaur, but we would like one. <laughs> and remember to communicate. Uh, whatever tools you're using, whether it's uh, no longer working on this network, I don't think any of those work on this network now that I think about it. I don't think you can use any of these tools right now. Um, but yeah, it's important to always remember to communicate. That's what makes the difference. That's what keeps us together. <laughs> It keeps us away from dangerous situations to call out to our friends and community members, hey, that's actually a cannon your face is in. You should move. <laughs> it's, it's not going to last long term. But uh, if we stick together, I think we can do it. So thanks. So you ever see yourself in an empty stadium or you know, only half your team's available? What do you do when you're trying to solve problems when you don't have enough people there with you? You kind of wait for the next slide to happen. <laughs> 15 seconds. Uh, well, containers, containers, they, they really help you build up your application stack. You have to put everything in here. No more, no more servers, no more uh, uh, infrastructure. You need to put all your immutable infrastructure inside containers, because that's the way to go. But what happens when your container crashes? What happens when your infrastructure goes down? How do you solve that? What do we do? We need redundancy. We need to have scalability within what we're building. We need to make sure we're not just putting everything on one boat. So <laughs> what happens when your infrastructure is on fire? And for some reason, you have some animal, uh, animals bathing in your backyard. <laughs> well, how do you do this? Well, you, you got to figure out a good way to, I got it. <laughs> So what, how do you figure out a good way to be able to see where your problems are? You got to kind of look behind you a little bit. You got to see <laughs> where you came from and try and figure out the next best way of going about it. Now, sometimes we have to be like a, like a kid who's at a pie eating contest where <laughs> you feel like you just ate too much um, or you're, you're ingesting too much information. Well, how can you figure that out? And how can you figure out a good way to manage your infrastructure? <laughs> Good job. <laughs>